We began some weeks ago a series entitled Precious in His Sight. Our main text is right here in 1 Peter chapter 1, and we'll continue today. Before we read and before we go further, let's join together in prayer, releasing faith. There is so much to see and know about our good God. There is so much to see and know about our redemption in Christ, what it means that we've been redeemed, that we've been saved. Uh, as mentioned in Phyllis this morning, I was reminded of what Brother Hagin says so many times. He said, the more you learn, the less you see you knew. And there's so much. And sometimes he'd just shake his head and go, we know so little. We know so little. And of course, compared to a lot of folks, he knew a lot. But that's the truth. You find that the people that think they know a lot are the ones that don't know much at all. Uh, I, uh, as I begin to look at some things about our redemption last night, uh, I got so excited. And I was still so wired this morning at 4 o'clock. I thought, you better go to sleep for a little bit. <laughs> because you just, I, I, you just keep going and going and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And you think, man, there's so many things we, we think we know because we've heard it. We've said it a lot. We don't know what this means. God is beyond words good and great. And what He has done for us in saving us and redeeming us, I believe it will take us the rest of eternity to find out what He's done for us. But let's believe for more light on it right now. Will you believe with me? Yes. Father, in Jesus' name we agree together as touching this thing, asking You for utterance and for anointing. Asking you, Lord, let us see. Everybody said out loud, Lord, let me see, let me see. what you have done for us, done for us. In, our in our redemption in Christ. In Christ. I, want I want to understand how big it is, how, big it is. how, precious, it is. how precious it is, how valuable it is. In Jesus' name, in Jesus name. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In uh, 1 Peter and 1, 18, he said, As much as you know, you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but you were redeemed with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. We've been redeemed with the precious blood of Christ. Most every Christian knows that. And yet, what does that mean? In uh, the uh, New Century Version says it like this, you know in the past you were living in a worthless way, a way passed down from the people who lived before you. But you were saved from that useless life. Oh, somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. you were saved from that useless life, that worthless way of living. You were bought, not with something that ruins like gold or silver, but you were bought with the precious blood of Christ, of the pure and perfect Lamb. Oh, hallelujah. Weiss translation says, with the costly blood, highly honored blood of the Lamb, without blemish, spotless, the blood of Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. James talks about that the Lord is waiting for the precious fruit of the earth and has long patience for it. That's one reason why the earth is still turning and this, this uh, segment of time is still going on. The Lord wants harvest yes. from the planet, harvest of believers on Him. Yes. And I know 
that, you know, all of us know there are a lot of things about this place that's not good and trials and tests. And a lot of times you think, Lord, come today. Just, just come today. And a lot of people are saying, yeah, I owe money. Come, come now. Get me out of this so I don't have to face this or that. But the, uh, the long suffering and patience of our Lord to wait longer is salvation yes. for other people yes. who've not yet come in. Yes. That's right. So yeah, we want him to come and we want to wind this thing up. But at the same time, we want everybody to come in yes. that can come in and that will come in. Yes. And so it's not up to you and me. It's going to happen just exactly the way that it should. And there's coming a time, though, when the trumpet's going to sound. Yes. And that's it. Yes. But uh, till then, there's work to be done. Yes. He said uh, that we redeem with the precious blood of the Lamb. That's the same word that describes precious fruit of the earth. The precious blood was given and paid for the precious fruit. Showing that to God the precious fruit is of equal value to the precious blood. Amen. The same word is used to describe how costly, expensive, which is what precious means. Like the same word is used to describe precious like gold, silver, precious metals, precious jewels. Means very expensive, very costly. This is something that has not registered with much of the church world, is that we are worth the blood of the Lamb. Our worth is equal to the worth of the blood. That's what was paid for us. That's what has set our value forever. Selah. Yes. Dwell on that. Think about that. Now here's something the Lord said to me last night. The reason people across the planet don't have a sense of worth and value is because they don't value Him. They don't value Jesus they don't value the blood. You can't have any more sense of self-worth than you value him. Your value of the blood. And so I want to talk this morning as the Lord would help us about the precious blood. How valuable is it? What makes the blood so precious? So valuable. I know most of us believe it, but uh, it, it comes back to our knowledge. The more you see how Im important something is, your level of honor can rise. Amen. Hmm? We just got through praying, yes, we did. didn't we? Yes. Lord, show us. You believe it's His will, don't you? Yes. That we see how important this is and how yes. precious the blood is. So, uh, in, uh, let's see, go with me to 1 Corinthians 6, please. 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 11. 1 Corinthians 6 and 11 says, such were some of you, talking about ungodly, sinful, perverted, distorted. Such were some of you. Were being the operative word. Used to be. Not anymore. You were sinners, ungodly, distorted, perverted. But you are washed. You are sanctified. You are justified. Ho, oh, ho. In the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Amen. Skipping down to verse 19, he says, What? 
Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own, for you are bought with a price. What kind of price? You've been bought. Huh? I mean, in the criminal world, they're talking about, they talk about being a made man. I'm a bought man. <laughs> I've been bought. And, and being bought is what made me what I am and who I am. Because what was paid to buy me, which is what we're talking about when we say redeem, Redeem, I mean, if you got a bunch of stamps or coupons and you redeem them, what does that mean? It was used as payment. It was turned into payment in exchange for something. Well, to say we've been redeemed is to say we've been bought. The reason we needed to be bought is because we sold ourselves. From Adam and Eve all the way down, sold ourselves through bowing our knee to the evil one and yielding to sin and being disobedient and lost our soul. Is that right? Lost our soul, lost our life. Oh, but God loved us so much. He so loved the world. He would not just sit by and watch us perish. He owned us by right of creation. He owned us by right of, if he didn't sustain the planet and the universe every millisecond, we'd perish too. But then he went and paid the highest price that's ever been paid for anything in the universe to buy back his own property that he created. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And even then, he handed us the keys and said, serve me if you want to. Should make us love him with every atom of our being. Should make us be so dedicated to him for the rest of eternity. Right? We wouldn't exist. And we would have no future. Much less a place in his very own family. Much less a place to rule and reign with him in his eternal kingdom. If he hadn't made us and then bought us back. Yeah. Somebody say, he bought me. He bought me. I've been bought with a price. And what was the price that was paid for me and you? It was, it is, the precious costly blood of the Lamb. Oh, he's here today, saints. Can you sense him, the Holy Spirit? <laughs> We're talking about something he can, he can manifest with. Hallelujah. Mm. Whew. The book of Acts chapter 20 says, the assembly of God he acquired through his own blood. Hallelujah. Revelation 1.5 says, Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And he's made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Why? The blood. What is it about the blood that's so important, that's so significant? If you look back at the Old Covenant, you'll see that Hebrews talks about this extensively, that in the establishing of the first covenant, nothing was dedicated without blood. Is that right? There was the shedding of the blood of bulls and sheep and animals. And in the blood was taken. When the, uh, uh, the place where the ark was, the holy of holies and the holy place and the, 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 the laver and, and all the articles, the, the tent, even the priests and their clothes and everything had blood sprinkled on them. Blood, blood, blood. Now to many people uh, today that sounds gross. They go, ew, 
Blood? Sticky blood? Just sounds like you messed up the clothes when you did that. Why in the world would you sprinkle blood on him? Because it said, it went on to say, uh, for without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. None, none. What does that mean? The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God Hallelujah. is eternal life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Through Christ. Amen. And we could say through his blood. Yes. Why so much about the blood? Because it's about death and life. Amen. And the reason you have to talk about the blood is because the life is in the blood. Oh, somebody say, the life is in the blood. The Lord said this to him in the very first couple of books of the Bible. He talked about the life being in the blood. But then in Leviticus 17, he went into detail about it. And put up, if you would, Leviticus 17, 11. He went into detail. He said, the life of the flesh is in the blood. I've given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. Why? Why does blood make atonement? Because the life is in the blood. Verse 12, Therefore I said to the, the children of Israel, No soul of you shall eat blood, Neither shall any stranger that sojourns among you eat blood. And whatever man there be of the children of Israel or the strangers that sojourn among you that hunts and catches any beast or fowl that may be eaten, he will pour out the blood thereof and cover it with dust. You, and I believe it's the same today. If you understand the significance of blood, you won't eat it. You won't want anything that has blood in it like that. Now, it didn't say they, they ate meat but they drained it of the blood. Amen. He went on to say, for it is the life of all flesh. The blood of it is for the life thereof. Therefore I said to the children of Israel, you shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh, for the life of all flesh is in the blood thereof. He just keeps saying it, doesn't he? The life is in the blood. Amen. The life is in the blood. Yeah. What's in the blood? Life. 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 Now we know, uh, we, we, we've learned a few things about that medically and scientifically. You can take somebody that's, that's pale and white and seems like they're gone or almost gone and because they've lost so much blood and you can take some blood and you begin to pump it into them and, and their flesh begins to become pink again and red again or what, whatever, uh, the, the flush comes back and the life comes back. And the reason our body is experiencing life right now is because every time the heart beats, it circulates that blood all through the body. And in that blood, people say, well, there's, the, uh, there's this and there's that and there's the nutrients and there's oxygen. There's more than that. I said there's more than what you can see under a microscope in the blood. Why? Because God said so. Life is in the blood. There's life in the blood. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, what life was in the blood of the Lamb? <laughs> I said, what life is in the blood of the Lamb? In John 1 and 1, it says, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Who are we talking about? Do anybody know who we're talking about? We're talking about Jesus. The Word made flesh. And who is the Word? And the Word was God. Hallelujah. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him and without Him was not anything made that was made. Do you believe it? Yes. 
So don't you believe anybody trying to tell you that all of this just sprang into existence by itself. There was nothing that exists created that wasn't created by our Master and Lord and Savior who became flesh. Jesus. Verse 4, in Him was life. <laughs> and the life was light of men. In the blood of the Lamb is life. If you look up this word in the Greek, it's the word zoe. And it's often translated everlasting life, eternal life. It's resurrection, eternal life. That's what was and is in the blood of the Lamb. Eternal life. Zoe. It's a force we know little about. Hmm? It's a force so great, the possessors of it never die. Oh, it's a force so great. The possessors of it are made in truth the sons of the living God who live forever and cannot die. What's that worth? <laughs> What's that worth? Who was it? Ponce de Leon that came over here in Florida and was searching for the fountain of youth huh? and gold, right? Trying to find that secret elixir, trying to find that water of life that could stop this dreaded aging process, huh? and save a man from certain death. And he's dead. He's dead. <laughs> and everybody else is with him is dead. Huh? And everybody that came up with any other kind of thing that's going to keep you from dying, dead. 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 But there is one who came according to prophecy. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Born of a virgin. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Lived and died on the cross, yeah. but the third day yeah. rose again yeah. from the dead. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Proving, demonstrating the power of an endless life. Yeah. Proving the existence and reality of eternal life. Yes. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. And the Bible said the blood that he shed, that flowed out of him in the scourging, at the mocking, on the cross, that blood, the scripture says, is on the mercy seat in heaven. And the Bible says that blood speaks. It bears witness. It testifies. What's the blood saying? <laughs> What's the blood saying? Live! Holy! Righteous! Made worthy. What's it worth? How precious is this blood that has the life, the zoe, everlasting eternal life. Go with me to Hebrews, please. Hebrews 1. Man, the Lord's helping us this morning. Oh, He's helping us. In John 5, 26, while you're going there, the scripture, had, Jesus had said this, as the Father has life in himself, yes. 
so has he given the Son to have life in himself. Just like the Almighty Creator has life in him without a physical, he, he, he's not a, a, a physical human. What, what is his structure? What is his substance? We're going to talk about that in just a moment. And yet, he, he is, is life. And just like he has life in himself, he has given the Son to have life in himself. Well, as the Son, having been the Word made flesh, walking among men with a human body, where's this life that's in God? It's in the Master's blood. The life is in his blood. The force of life that's in the Creator sitting on the throne. That same force is in the blood Amen. of the Lamb. Hallelujah. In Hebrews 1 and 1, and I'm reading from the Holman translation. I don't know if the guys have that back there or not, but perhaps. Holman. Verse 1. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look how quick they are. <laughs> Whoo! No dust on them. Thanks, guys. They help me so much. They don't have a clue where I'm going unless they get a word of knowledge. <laughs> Somebody said, won't you tell them? I don't know. I don't know till, till we find out. <laughs> Long ago, God spoke to the fathers by the prophets at different times and in different ways. In these last days, He's spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, and through whom he made the universe. Glory to God. Glory to God. If you want to know about God, we, we've been praying and believing for a, a few years now. Lord, show us what's you and what's not you. What's of you and what's just men. What's good and right and what's not good and right. And one thing I'm becoming increasingly clear on, if you want to understand God and know about Him, don't look to religion. Amen. Don't look to religion. Look at creation. You want to know about God, look up in the night sky. Hmm? That's God. Look, and down here on the earth, now you, got, you have to remind yourself, all of this has been affected by the curse. It's, it's, a, it's a, sh a shadow of its previous self. And yet, still, you can see amazing splendor and beauty. Right? That's God. Hmm? The mountains, the oceans, the life, hmm? and the universe, the stars, the planets, that's God. That's the reality of God. And if you want to know God, look at creation and Look at Jesus. Yes. Look at Jesus. Yes. Everything he said, yes. everything he did, yes. you're seeing God. Yes. You're hearing God. Yes. Everything. everything. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> it goes on to say, verse 3, he is, Jesus is, the radiance of his glory. Yes. He is the exact expression of his nature. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What's God really like? Get your Bible. Yes. Read Matthew, yes. Mark, yes. Luke, John. Yes. Listen carefully to every word Jesus said. Look carefully at everything he did. You are seeing God, the creator, yes. in manifestation. Yes. Don't you remember? Those he walked with yes. for those few years. Yes. Uh, he kept talking about the Father so much until one of them just spoke out and said, show us the Father. Let us see. Tell us what he's like. Show us. And he said, have I been all this time with you? And you haven't known me. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Oh, somebody say, I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. If you've seen me, he said, you have seen the Father. You have seen the Father. Whew. 
1 John 5, hold your place there in Hebrews, we're not through. 1 John 5, 11 says, this is the record that God has given to us eternal life. Yes. And this life is in His Son. Yes. Where specifically was the life? <laughs> Life's in the blood. Yes. Now verse 12, he that has the Son has life. He that has not the Son of God has not life. Now I know people have got all kind of different ideas about religions and there are many ways to God, but if you believe the Bible, you have to believe this. That's right. That's right. If you don't have the Son, you don't have life. That's right. Verse 13, these things I've written to you that you may believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Somebody say, I believe. I believe. Now finishing Hebrews, Jesus is the radiance of God's glory. He is the exact expression. This is Hebrews 1, 3 in Holmans. He is the exact expression of his nature. He sustains all things by his powerful word. I mean, the earth looks like the size of the thumb beside this paper compared to our sun. Or, or much smaller. M much smaller. And uh, that's just one of the billions and billions of stars that have planets yes. rotating around them. Yes. The power to keep those suns burning, the, the power of gravity, all of that is sustained by the words that he spoke. When he said light be, that word is still sustaining the universe. And when he created everything that's mentioned in Genesis, how great he must be. Huh? The creator has to be bigger and greater than the creation. Right? It came out of him. How big he, he, he has to be. And Jesus is the radiance of his glory. He is the exact expression of his nature. He sustains all things by his powerful word. Everything was made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. After making purification for our sins, he sat down at the right hand of majesty on high. If you want to get more out of this, read Hebrews. Slowly, carefully. He keeps referring to the, the, the tabernacle and, and the blood and, and telling us that that is a type and shadow of the actual things that are in heaven and how the high priest took the blood of animals and, and atoned. That do, that's not what we have today. I, I know a lot of people think so, but that has to do with covering, sins being covered. And then next year they had to be covered again. Our sins are not covered. I said, our sins are not covered. Our sins have been washed away by the blood of the Lamb. It was not possible for the blood of bulls and goats to give eternal life. That, uh, that eternal life was not in those animals. But it was in Jesus. Hallelujah. And that's what was paid for us. Hebrews 9, that's... that's what it says, 9-11, Christ being come a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not with hands, that is to say not of this building. The, the tabernacle and the place of washing and the place of incense and the place where the showbread was and the uh, holy of holies, uh, the uh, ark of the covenant and the cherubim and where the, uh, uh, the, the blood uh, is placed. All of that is an exact representation of what exists actually in heaven. The real thing. And the master, when he died, entered in to heaven itself. The holy of holies, not with the blood of bulls and goats, but with his own blood. 
Oh, somebody say, I believe it. Amen. Jesus, at, upon his death, went into heaven with his blood and placed it on the mercy seat. And it was accepted of the Creator as the price to redeem us. And it will be there forever. The blood, we sing about it, the blood will never lose its power. Never. Never. It is the power of resurrection life. It is the power of everlasting, eternal Zoe, yes. life of God himself. Yes. It's God's own life. Yes. Thank you, Lord. It is precious beyond description. Yes. But he paid it for us. And that brings our value up to the value of what was given for us. The more we see the value of the blood, the more we see our own value. The less you value the blood, the less you can have a sense of value and worth. In the, go to the 10th chapter, please, of Hebrews. Chapter 10. And 26. Now, we need a little background. One of the things that the Spirit of God was speaking to the Christians in this, that, that this letter and, and writings addressed to, because of persecution and pressure, some of them were backing off their stand in Christianity. People that had received Jesus and confessed Him as Lord were backing off. You know, so people were being killed for their faith, right and left. And the pressure was tremendous. And so some people were actually disavowing Jesus in public to be spared from the persecution and even death and saying, I, I don't believe in Jesus. I'm not one of those. And the Spirit of God describes to them the, I don't know how the word, the seriousness of what, the, what is happening here. He said, if we sin willfully after we've received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins. If you uh, reject the blood of the Lamb, there is no other sacrifice. There is no other source of eternal life. Verse 27, the only thing that remains if you do that is a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. This is being lost. Keep reading. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy. Under two or three witnesses, this is the first covenant that was established with animal blood. It was serious. But of how much sorer punishment, suppose you, shall he be thought worthy who has trodden underfoot the Son of God and counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and has done despite unto the Spirit of grace." For we know him that said, Vengeance belongs to me. I will recompense, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Amen. What we're talking about right now is as serious as it gets. And it, you could call it, uh, 1 John refers to, the sin unto death. It is. Yes. Yes, it is. What is the sin unto death? I know I had a fellow that was flying with me one time, a contract pilot, and uh, we were at a certain place, and I could tell he was uncomfortable being in the services and being around some of these things. And, and I just knew in my spirit why. It's because he had some things in his life that wasn't right. And we're in an elevator going uh, back to the room, 
after a, a situation and, and just came up in my spirit. I looked at him. I said, you know, I said, nobody's in hell for smoking or drinking or doing drugs or having affairs or stealing or killing. His mouth fell open. <laughs> he was just shot. And that's why I said it. I said, no, nobody's in hell because of that. People think that's it. You know why people wind up in hell? Because they despised the precious blood of the Lamb. And the world is full of people today. I mean, it's all over TV. It's all over media. Blaspheming Jesus. Mocking Him. Making fun. They don't know how serious a situation they're in. I don't care who you are. When you breathe your last breath and you slip out of here into eternity, you're going to want to be saved. You, you're, going to, you're going to not want to die. And when I say die, there's a death beyond physical death. It's called the second death. And it is total separation from eternal life. The life as God has it. And there is no other name under heaven whereby men must be saved. And there is no other blood found anywhere in the universe that has the life of God that can cleanse and wash away sin. How many think the blood should be exalted? Is that right? The master, the life that's in that blood should be reverenced. Jesus talked about uh, sending messengers to his people and them killing them and persecuting them and, and hurting them. And the Bible said, as he described the story, he said, so the father said, I will send them my son. That's right. They will respect him. That's right. What does that mean? They'll value him. They'll treat him with respect. But when he sent him, they didn't. They said, this is the heir. Let's kill him. And they killed him and threw him out. That's why the world is heading for judgment. Because the Father gave and sent the most precious thing He has, the most expensive thing He has to get us. And if you spit on that, you deserve to be lost. If you reject that, if you treat that with disdain and contempt, if you blaspheme that blood, you will be lost. And there is no hope for you. I know people say, what about all these other religions? I'm, God's going to handle it. Yes, yes. Is that right? Yes. But you and I have to make up our mind, do we believe this book or not? Do we believe this word or not? I have made up my mind. Have you made up your mind? Yes. The blood of the Lamb is to me most precious. Precious beyond words. I'd have to talk in tongues and I still couldn't describe it. Is that right? The blood of the Lamb is the blood of the precious, spotless, without blemish. In Him was no sin. Hallelujah. In Him was no imperfection, no blemish, no blot, no stain, none, none, none. And that blood... He freely gave his own blood and the Father freely gave him because in, to him you and I are worth the same. We were and are worth giving that to obtain. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When people say ignorant things that they know nothing about, the Lord has mercy on them because He knows they don't know what they're talking about. But people who know better should say better, should speak better, right? And uh, we want to watch how we refer to the Master. Not, not to be scared of Him, but He is so amazing. He is so precious. His blood contains the essence of God Himself that makes Him an eternal being. Yeah. Amen. We don't know how, God, how long God has existed. We get some samplings that things in the universe that we can see and perceive could be billions of years old. Well, He's got to be been around before that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 
and he's not aging, and he's not wearing out. And those who receive him, the Bible says, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. With the same nature that he has. That means that same eternal life is in the believer. Not, not going to be in the believer is right now in the believer. <laughs> I've already begun my eternal life. It happened when I bowed my knee to Jesus and received what he did for me and confessed him as Lord of my life. I'm already a son of the living God. I'm already, I'm already a living child of the living God, the Most High. And the reason I am and the only reason I am is because of the precious blood of the Lamb. That's the only reason. And so to me and to you, that blood holds a place like no other place. Is that right? It's on the mercy seat right now. Alive. That blood's living and it's speaking. Hallelujah. It's the only way you and I can come before the throne. It's the only way we have acceptance into the family and acceptance of God. It's because God doesn't look at us, our failures, our mistakes, our sins. When he looks at us, he sees the blood. He sees that clean, that clean, cleanliness. He sees that life, that zoe. I am what I am. By the blood. I am who I am by the blood. It has forever determined my worth and my value. Oh, hallelujah. Lift your hands, everybody. Let's thank Him. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we worship you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We magnify you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. 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 Whoo. <laughs> Let me give you a snapshot of your future. Hmm? God gave it to us in the Word. You want to you take a glimpse of yourself? You want to see yourself? Some time from now? Revelation. Seven. Revelation seven. You know, when you realize I am eternally alive, not my body, it's going to be this body right here, is going to have eternal life manifest in it one day when the trumpet sounds. <laughs> and this mortal is going to put on immortal. This corruptible is going to put on incorruptible. That's that same life. That Zoe life as God has it. But in my spirit, I have it right now. I have it right now. That's, that's what happened when you were born again. You were born from above is actually what the phrase literally says. We say born again all the time, but literally it's born from above. The life that has recreated us didn't originate from earth. We're, we're not of this world in the sense that we're, our, our life now has come from another place. And after this life is over, and after the things have been fulfilled concerning the church and redemption and what we just talked about, the Lord is in His long patience is, is waiting for the precious fruit of the earth. When the last one has come in, only He would know that. 
Verse 9, Revelation 7, 9, after this, he said, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb. Who? Jesus. The Lamb. And they were clothed with white robes and they had palms in their hands. Verse 10. And they cried this vast throng, this huge crowd that no man could number, robed in white. They cried with a loud voice saying, salvation, salvation to our God who sits upon the throne and unto the Lamb, the Holy One. You multiply that times millions upon millions of eternal live beings. We never heard a sound like that. It's going to rise to the glory of God. Verse 11, and all the angels stood round about the throne and the elders and the four beasts and they fell before the throne on their faces and they worshiped God. God, the source of all life, of all creation, hallelujah, of all power. The source of every burning star and the gravitational pull of every planet. And the light in my mind and the next beat of my heart. And they said, Amen. amen. They're amen in us. <laughs> They're amen in what we said. Yes. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving, honor and power and might. Do you suppose there'll be a surge throughout the throngs? Power like we've never experienced. Be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And 13. And one of the elders answered and said unto me, John, what are these? We'd say, who are these arrayed in these white robes? Who are these? Those closest to the throne are saying, who are these? <laughs> the elders who sit closer to the presence of God than any being. The four beasts, the creatures that are right there, right there in the throne. They said, who are these? Who are these? arrayed in these white robes. Where did they come from? Where did they come from? <laughs> Verse 14, I said to him, sir, you know. That's what you say when you don't know. <laughs> you say. See, the Lord is letting John see far off into the future. He, he's a witness of something. With God, time is, uh, I, I don't know how to begin to describe it because I don't understand myself. We, we, we know a, a beginning, a middle, an end. Apparently time is not that static to him. He said, these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. That's me. That's you. Hallelujah. Have you been washed by the blood of the Lamb? That's you. That's you. One day, you and I will be right there. One day, we will be part of that vast throng. One day. And the revelation also talked about it said, the accuser of their brethren accused them before their God night and day. Persecution, tribulation. But they overcame him. How, come on, how'd they do it? How'd they, do? they overcame him. How'd we get there? How'd we get there? Because we believed when other folks didn't believe. 
because we wouldn't quit when other people quit. Come on, are you listening? We would not turn loose of him. We would not deny him. We would not reject him. We reverence the blood. We hold to the blood and the power of the blood, the great price that was paid to redeem us. Hallelujah. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, hallelujah, and the word of their testimony. Thanks be unto God forever. Stand on your feet, everybody.